On December 7, 1941, the Japanese launched a major attack on the American naval base at Pearl Harbor. The attack ended in a tactical victory for the Japanese, leaving numerous American vessels and aircraft destroyed and killing over 2,000 people. The U.S. feared that the Japanese might be able to reach the American mainland, but knew that they were incapable of launching such an assault. However, there was another largely unheard of attack. It is one surrounded by censorship and secrecy by the government that consisted of over 9,000 of the world's first intercontinental ballistic missiles launched from Japan and landing by the hundreds on the west coast of North America. In 1942, the Americans launched the extremely successful Doolittle Raid. This airborne bombing of Japanese soil infuriated the Japanese and made them realize that if they wanted to compete in the war, they would have to retaliate with an attack on the American mainland. But the Japanese did not have the manpower to do so, and it appeared that they would be incapable of retaliation. Then, in December, a balloon landed, rigged with explosives in Thermopolis, Wyoming. Five days later, another landed in Kalapalski, Montana, and still another in Wyoming four days after that. The United States government was clueless, but quickly issued a system to censor the spread of information regarding these mysterious UFOs. After the first few balloons had landed, the mystery was rising. Balloon remnants were sent to Butte, Montana, where the FBI found that the sand used as ballast was from a specific Japanese beach. The government, therefore, concluded these balloons were made in Japan and launched from submarines off the west coast of the United States because it was considered impossible to send them all the way from Japan across the Pacific Ocean. In reality, the Japanese had used a different, more innovative and unorthodox approach to transporting their payload across the Pacific. They utilized the jet stream that spanned the Pacific Ocean, leading directly to the west coast of America. The jet stream, discovered by Japanese scientist Washiburu Oishi, is found 30,000 feet above sea level. Three years after they launched their attack on Pearl Harbor, the Japanese were desperate to once again threaten the United States but this time on American mainland soil. The solution was to send bomb-equipped balloons across the Pacific Ocean to land at random in American cities and countrysides. As previously mentioned, the Japanese were short on manpower, and as a result, they chose to enlist the school children to assemble the balloon envelopes and devices that hung from them. These balloons, known as fugos, meaning silent in Japanese, were designed to mysteriously drift across the Pacific Ocean and into the airspace above the North American continent. Fugos, which consisted of a paper envelope 33 feet in diameter, were filled with hydrogen gas and launched from the east coast of Japan, where they would rise to the jet stream and travel at 80 to 100 miles per hour. And over the course of a few days, they reached the west coast of America. The jet stream is an unreliable means of transportation, and in order to maintain elevation, the Fugos were equipped with a set of up to 36 individual sandbags, each connected to a barometric pressure switch. As the Fugos traveled, temperature changes and leaking hydrogen caused them to lose elevation. As this happened, the barometer would trigger a fuse, dropping a sandbag. This would cause the blues to rise back to this jet stream. Each time the balloon fell too low, another bag would be dropped, causing it to oscillate up and down as it completed its intercontinental flight. Once all of the sandbags had been dropped, the balloons would be roughly over the western United States and would begin to drop explosives each time the barometer clicked. Each balloon carried four incinerary devices and a 33-pound anti-personnel bomb. Well, in general a failure, many of the incinerary charges were successful in starting forest fires in the American soil. Fortunately, the United States had a counter. The soldiers of the all-black 555th Parachute Infantry Battalion, deemed unfit for combat, were refitted as so-called smoke troopers. 
and were trained in wildfire fighting. One of these such paratroopers, Melvin Brown, died in action while on a mission to combat these fires. In addition, American fighter planes were assigned to seek out and destroy Fugos. The Japanese knew that they could not bomb the entire United States, so they instead relied on using the Fugos randomly dropping bombs so that nobody would know where the next one would hit. The purpose was to cause fear and chaos in the U.S. The U.S. military was getting close to Japan physically, and the Japanese thought that if they caused fear and chaos, as happened during Pearl Harbor, it would slow down the military. Between December of 1944 and April of 1945, over 300 balloons landed in North America up and down the coast, from Mexico to Alaska and as far east as the Midwest. While most landed in unpopulated areas, one touched down in Hanford, Washington, a location of the Manhattan Project. It hit a power line and effectively cut off the power to the whole plant. Had backup power not been running, the whole plant might have gone into radioactive meltdown. The U.S. government made the decision to censor all information regarding Fugos. Their primary motivation in doing so was to prevent the Japanese from realizing that their balloons were at all successful. In doing so, it was necessary to withhold all information regarding the Fugos from the general public. Though police departments were notified so that settings and incidents could be quickly investigated and covered up, the general public was, and still is, unaware of the danger that threatened them. This policy jeopardized the security of United States citizens. In May of 1945, in Bly, Oregon, the risks were realized. A pastor and his wife and five children were going on a fishing trip. They, they got to the stream and the pastor got out of the car and the kids ran for the creek and uh, the pastor's wife was following them. The children saw something that looked odd. Unbeknownst to them, they had found a downed Fugo that still had its live bomb. No one knows for sure. Maybe they kicked one of the incinerators and it caused the bomb to go off. Well, the shrapnel killed the five children and the pastor's wife. Whether it was worth it or not, the American government successfully kept the results of the Fugos secret from the Japanese. In the spring of 1945, they stopped sending these balloons partially because the trade winds of the jet stream were shifting, but also because of effective censorship. In the winter of 1944 and 45, the Japanese launched 9,000 Fugo balloon bombs. Only one in nine reached American soil. Militarily, it was not a success. Engineer-wise, it was because no one thought that balloons would fly all the way across the Pacific. From a military standpoint, the Fugos were a failure. However, it was in fact a test of American ability to respond and cover up an unconventional means of assault. These attacks, no matter how insignificant in comparison to the deaths in the war in Europe and the Pacific, resulted in the only casualties on the American mainland during World War II. This feat cannot be overlooked as the Japanese military killed Americans on their home soil from an attack launched from the other side of the world.